we got? Are we? It is happening. All right. So today is the twenty fourth of September, twenty twenty four. Uh, we're like halfway through Rock here in CSE four six six. I think it's we're about halfway there. Uh, memes. Once again, I did not select the memes, so we can blame SJ Zoo for whatever we have here. Uh, me starting rock challenges, unfinished memory. Yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. So uh, I mentioned at the beginning of rock that this should be uh, an easier module because it is kind of a natural continuation of memory corruption. If you can corrupt memory, uh, particularly when we're overwriting the saved return address, that is what rock is. We're just corrupting further than the initial save return address. So if you didn't make it very far in memory corruption, you're probably having a hard time right now. Um, content will continue to build upon itself. Land binary. So it's can't see slide on screen. You are correct. I am failing to utilize the new technology. Mash this button. There you go. My bad. Uh, so uh, it's pretty unusual for userly and binaries to have a syscall in them. Uh, however, some of the earlier challenges do have that, so you can practice performing raw uh, and not necessarily worry about some of the more complicated things. Uh, what do we got here? Me, me on ROP 7.0, looking at gadgets before asking a question and then after asking the question. Okay, so I'm going to assume, oh, okay, all right, I get it. This is all the same thing. They thought they had POP RSI, it was really POP RSI uh, with POP R15. And so there's going to be, uh, you know, an additional side effect that you need to account for when you're building your ROP chain. I'm tired of RET. I know you use 30 plus gadgets, it's too damn bad. I don't think, okay, at least the first half, uh, the first half of the challenges, there's not a huge restriction on how many gadgets you can use. So you're welcome to kind of use as many gadgets as you need. I believe, what's it, nine, 10, somewhere around there. Um, we start restricting how many gadgets you can use at least initially, and that's one of the problems you, you have to solve uh, via a stat pivot. Uh, rock chain after level nine, things do get a little bit messy uh, as far as what your rock chain needs to do, uh, because initially these challenges will only let you use a couple gadgets. You may need to perform a stack pivot and then in that stack pivot perform some other action that then results in like a stage two, uh, for instance, rock chain, uh, which is going to work very similar to like a stage one uh, or stage two shell code, except instead of writing literal instructions, uh, you're writing addresses and writing a rock chain. And so that it becomes a lot more, a lot more shaky ground. Uh, this also could be referencing some of the later challenges use PIE and ASLR. Uh, and so now your rock chain relies on a series of things like going well, uh, for instance, parsing uh, output from the challenge and then incorporating that into your rock chain. Uh, feeling, feelings of power. Okay, if you wrote a good script, apparently somebody solved six through eight with the same thing. Have have at it. No, no, no complaints there. Uh, how it feels when return to live C rock chain works on multiple consecutive levels. So depending upon like how you decided to tackle things, right? Because remember these are open open ended challenges, right? The binary just is how you decide to approach it and how your neighbor decides to approach it could be completely different. Uh, depending upon the approach that you chose to use earlier, it may plug along and solve several, right? Uh, you just avoided the sub problem that was in other challenges. Uh, spent the last hour researching creative solutions. You gave up and brute forced it in 30 seconds. Uh, I, I'm going to imagine that's uh, a loose reference to the challenge descriptions or help text where they say, hey, be creative or, you know, carefully craft a payload. If it is something where ASLR, uh, PIE randomization is at play, sometimes the correct answer is to do some type of brute force. Now there's obviously like a limit to 
you know, what is reasonable to brute force. Uh, I would say for this module, I want to say there is a pretty large brute force. I don't know which challenge it is, but I'm saying this from memory, where the intended is a brute force that is two to the 12, as far as the odds of success. So if you're thinking, hey, maybe I'm looking at something and it's a brute force, but it's more than one nibble, you might not be wrong, okay? But two to the 12 is reasonably large. So this isn't something that's just going to fall out in two to three minutes. You would need to craft your payload correctly and just know that it is correct. Otherwise you're writing this useless brute force that's never going to work. So this is where that like conceptual understanding, being able to throw GDB on something. Uh, I don't know, this person clearly wasn't doing the challenge I'm thinking of because 30 seconds is way too fast for what I'm thinking of. Uh, but if you, you want to verify as much as you can before you just let the, the infinite loop run. Because the infinite loop, if, if your logic is wrong, the infinite loop will never succeed. Uh, you're playing, playing to solve rock 7.0. First, you get the address to lib C to find DL We do, I don't think any of the lectures talked about this. Uh, DL open so I can get, get the handle for system use. System to call, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, okay, we realize we don't have to do any of this. Uh, yeah. So if you start randomly Googling stuff and just like doing random things on the internet, it may work, it may not work. You can definitely go in very strange directions that aren't where you necessarily need to. Um, within the pre-recorded lecture content, everything that like conceptually you need to understand uh, should be there. I, I don't believe at any point we talked about uh, DL open. Uh, on a somewhat related note, uh, I saw and heard that there were people that were leaking, calling puts puts to get a puts address. And then they were punching that into some website to identify your libc version. Is anyone doing that here? Okay. Uh, you're following blind instructions and not actually thinking. Uh, that's, that's bad on you. Uh, when I get to the demo, I'll explain why that is a silly thing. Um, my, I understand that it was like the first hit when you Googled like ret to libc or some, something like that, uh, that this, this guy didn't assume that you had the version of libc. A completely unnecessary step. Uh, so try not to debate yourself. Uh, okay, uh, general at t syntax bad meme, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, just general reminder for logistics, I am doing office hours Friday. Uh, from the students that have showed up, they seem to find it useful. Ask someone who has showed up if it is actually useful. And I would encourage people to attend if you're stuck. Uh, GDB, I know some people were still complaining on the Discord, things are wrong with GDB. If you remove the magic from two days ago, everything should be working as far as I'm aware. And I have not gotten around to installing Ropper, so I left this on here so I can shame myself. Uh, demo plans, uh, do you have anything specific? Yes. Okay, uh, so for Twitch, the comment was, I'm stuck on stack pivoting, I don't understand level nine. Same, Same thing, yeah. So so I, I talked to the class a little bit before I started the stream and people were like, ah, stack pivoting, stack pivoting. And I was like, I didn't prepare anything on stack pivoting. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Um, the things that I'm going to do, uh, this, do people actually understand the difference between the PLT and GOT? Or did we just like read something online? It's like, I use PLT on GOT. Do you want to know what it actually is? Do you need it? At the end of the day, flag is flag. Okay. So, so like if you, if you got the flag, you get the credit. Okay. So that's more of a on you, right? Do you want to have the, the knowledge or are you just like, screw it, I'm good. Uh, if you're good, we can, we can pass that. Uh, in theory, that'll be in some other recorded video anyway. So I'm fine with that. Uh, I do I do want to show puts puts, which at this point you've done, and it kind of touches on uh, GOT, PLT. And then based upon what we get from puts puts, uh, there seems to be quite a bit of confusion about uh, base address. How do I reason about what's going on inside of a library, particularly when it comes to things like a partial overwrite? Uh, and so I can use this toy binary, uh, hopefully, I haven't ran it end to end, uh, to show that 
Uh, and I'm going to use the Pwn Tools wrap functionality uh, in this demo opposed to hard coding numbers uh, like I did in the prior one. I do think it's good to do the first method. In general, I do not like Pwn Tools wrap, but at this point, some people are using it, so I might as well show it. And then we'll try and throw a stack pivot in there, since that seems to be the popular demand. Uh, puts puts is boring. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. You know, I'm not here for your entertainment. I'm here for your education. Uh, so hacker at dojo.pwn.college. Uh, the problem with stack pivoting is it's not that interesting to like do and show, I think I would say. Um, let me go into that ROP examples. ROP2. Cool. So we started all, or I ended the stream on Thursday with this as my example. And people thought this was kind of lame because I was just printing something off, right? Puts, puts. The next logical step uh, would be to do something like this. So uh, for those that can't see, uh, in example two from last week, we were printing out the address of puts. I showed that you could use a Puntil's elf object and using the address of puts, we can find other things in libc. The difference here with example three is the thing that is being leaked out is no longer in libc. What I'm printing out is main. And my, my, I'm also including some, some free gadgets here. I'm not hiding that. Uh, it just makes it easier for demo purposes. So can I get all the way to libc from here. Yes? No? Nobody knows? We just got done calling puts puts boring and nobody's like, yeah, we can puts puts on this. All right. If, if you wanna get to stack pivoting, you gotta fire me through what I'm already gonna ramble about. Otherwise we won't have time. Okay. So uh, I'm going to make this thing. I think I, what did I call this? Uh, elf leak. All right. So we, we have our elf leak binary here. Do I have a do.py? I do not. I'm not going to trap myself with IPython this time. Write some boilerplate. It is important that you set the context or the architecture uh, since I'm going to be using the Pwn Tools ROP module. And then we start off with some boilerplate. Uh, what did I do? AM is not good. Uh, what am I thinking of? AMD, AMD 64. Okay, and so we have something like this. Split it off so I'm not cutting myself off. It's about there. And then we will make this executable. I read my do.py, and then if I could type. All right. It spits out. Uh, here's uh, main is located at, and then ready to receive input. Uh, the binary then reads in. There's a buffer overflow. It's the same offset as before, because that isn't really what we're trying to do today. Uh, so one thing that I want to do that I showed on Thursday, we'll see if anyone remembers, is capture this output. How do I get that output? Uh, tell, tell me what to type. What are we getting? Where are we going? Uh, P, receive until, located at, I'm going to give it a space. Uh, so receive line will read up to and including a new line. Strip will remove that new line. So now I have, in theory, uh, this right here ending at D. What do I want to do with that value? 
Uh, all right, convert it to an int, specify that this is base 16, uh, and this is going to be the address of main. So now I have this. Okay, so one of the things uh, that you can do is use the pwn tools elf object. There's a few ways that you could do this. There's all caps elf. And then if that is one way that I could set this, uh, the other way is since I already have a running process of this, we can just say E equals P dot elf. It's gonna give me that same object because it knows the binary that I'm working with. What is the problem uh, with my P dot elf at the moment? So I, like P dot elf is useful because I can do things like uh, print E symbols main. Uh, we can even make this a fancy str string. Main is at. Get real fancy with her. Um, and then we'll say main is really at the hex of whatever the challenge told me. I'm going to trust that the challenge is correct here. Right, and if I were to do this, uh, what we see is my L thinks uh, main is at x 11 AD. However, the challenge informed me that it's at some, some other very, very long address. How do I inform my ELF object here in Pwn Tools to think about this correctly? Is it something that, what do we got? Okay, we want to set the base address. So we need to inform the ELF object because the ELF object has no idea what the runtime base address of my elf is. Because this this elf, I'm compiling with PIE. So that means at runtime, the, the address of where main is will be different every time. If I run this five times, I get five different addresses. Uh, what the elf object is telling me by default is where this is statically. What is the static offset from the beginning of the elf, which is not useful to me at runtime. Now we can fix that by setting the address to be the main address minus. Uh, what do you want? OK. I'm going to do this. And everyone follows what, what's going on here. I'm taking my leak. Remember, the leak is where main is in the elf at runtime. And what I'm saying here is, the beginning of the elf in memory is wherever main is minus the distance into the elf where main is. Does this make sense? Should I draw it? All right, silence. We're just absorbing. Uh, that's a weird address. No, you're, you're just trying to flog me there, Twitch. All right, at least make him good hits. Uh, so now if I run this again, and ADDR. Now, uh, what we see here is my L says main is at, and this is where main really is, right? And so now my programmatic representation here, my ELF object over in my exploitation script has more information so we can accurately represent what memory looks like at runtime. So far, so good. Uh, stack pivoting. Uh, question, why not use both heart numbers plus ROP? Uh, yeah, you, come on, man, don't troll, all right? You're better than that. Okay, so what I want to find, my goal is I want to find libc, right? This is where doing puts puts is useful. So we want to call puts on puts. In theory, you most of you did this already. How'd you do it? Print the GOT address of puts with the PLT address of puts, okay? So I have these two things. 
I don't know how to use them yet. Uh, my payload, we're just going to trust in the interest of time. This is the padding because I'm reusing the same basic template here. And this is where, okay, I need to build up my payload. Now I could uh, P64 this and P64 that and, and play that game. Instead, I'm going to use uh, Pwn Tools ROP object. Uh, and we can do that by saying R equals ROP of E. This is a ROP object, a Pwn Tools ROP object that now has the context of the elf. The order of operations here matters. If you set the ROP to be on the elf before you set the address, the ROP is going to have all sorts of bad data, right? So we want to make sure that we uh, set the base address of the elf object before we create the ROP on the elf. Uh, okay. And what I can do here is I can build up my um, ROP chain. So instead of doing this math by hand, I can say rop dot raw e dot. Uh, I want got puts, and then I also want. I want to get one of those um, gadgets that I had hiding in here. So I could rop gadget binary a dot out, and I'm look interested in. I think RDI is what I'm after. And we see I have this gadget and it's located right here. But this isn't going to help me. Why is this address not going to help me? Because of PIE, right? What it's telling me here is give me a static address. So this is useless. Now I could go over here and do the math and say, okay, my pop RDI gadget is the base address of the elf plus OX11C, right? I could do something like this, uh, but my uh, this is a little bit tedious and I'm going to have to do this for every gadget that I find using ROP gadget. Instead, what I can do is say R raw RDI, or no, I'm sorry, not R raw RDI, R raw uh, R dot RDI, bam. Uh, R dot RDI is calling R on the ROP object, which is going to search the elf for a gadget that sets RDI. In this case, I threw it in there. It's a contrived uh, pop RDI. And Pwn Tools is going to do all the math instead of me setting the base address and adding this. So if this is pop RDI, uh, what's the next thing that I want? My goal is to call uh, puts on puts. The calling of puts is the PLT. The address of puts is the GOT. So which one do I want to pop into RDI? The GOT. So I can R raw E GOT puts, which is actually what I already had. And then we'll R raw the PLT of puts. My payload down here uh, becomes R chain. What that's going to do is take these gadgets and then turn this into a byte string of those gadgets. Now, I can't demo this in a script as easily. But uh, if I were to say um, E equals elf of A dot out, R equals ROP of E, R raw R RDI. And let's do that, I don't know, three times. One of the nice things about using this ROP uh, object of Pwn Tools is it has this dump, I think it's dump? I think it's dump, not dumps. Uh, dump function. And what that does is it gives me this nice printout of what does my rock chain look like. 
So if I'm trying to build this up in an interactive session, and you can call print or dump in a script, but it makes sense to use it interactively because then you can see what you're building up as you're building it. Now, obviously the addresses here are complete baloney because I didn't base this off of anything running, but you can get an idea of how that works. Uh, there are other cool functionalities that you may or may not have found. Um, for instance, you can call a function, or as long as there is a symbol here, by, by calling r call and then the symbol. So this is now a prop gadget that's going to go to the beginning of main. Not saying that you need to do that. I know some people are trying it. Yeah, have, have at it. Uh, but you could definitely see how this could be useful if instead of building my prop gadget off of the elf that was the binary, if I was doing that with, for instance, libc, then I could r call chmod open uh, whatever. Uh, you can provide arguments. You just put them in an array. Right? And so now that's going to call main uh, with uh, that's that's a lie. That will not call main. Okay. Uh, and so now I in one line I said I'm going to call main. Then I said I want to call main with some arguments. Phone Tools is figuring out how to set up these arguments for me. And so it's building that rock chain for you. Uh, rock Gadget also has a like super, in theory, great tool uh, where it will try and automatically build a rock chain for you. In my personal experience, these type of automated high level things explode quite a bit. Uh, so they're great when they work, but expect them to, to break. All right, so I have puts puts. Let's run my script. That was a fine little detour. Uh, somebody says, read the docs always. Do I get anything here? Ready to receive input. Oh, uh, I'm not sending my payload. That is, that is a problem. P send payload. Okay. All right, we got a seg fault. What I'm hoping here eh, maybe I'm wrong. I'll throw a GDB at this. Uh, what'd you say? Uh strip will eat the new line. I don't that that's not what's causing me to seg fault. I, I know that isn't the issue. It's not what I was expecting to occur. So let's uh, let's debug this bad boy. Like I could seg fault and I could be doing what I want, but I, what I was expecting was I, in theory, I'm calling, uh, I'm setting RDI and then I'm calling puts on puts. That should print some bytes to to the screen. And so what I was expecting to see was. It didn't, didn't have to be a pretty address, but some garbage uh, appearing after this, right? I ran it a couple times. Maybe the first one, there was a, a null byte or a new line or something, but there should have been some garbage bytes that displayed to my screen. So I'm doing something wrong here. So let's let's see what it is. Are you sending the payload the second time? So there's only one payload here. Uh, if we see, I'm constructing the payload. So I'm using rock to build the rock chain. My payload is this, which I just kind of assumed was correct. I actually don't know that it is. Um, and then I'm appending the, the rock chain. Right? So, so uh, either my padding is off or my rock gadgets are bad. And, and so it's all right, well, let's figure out which one it is. Uh, some people would be like, hey, let's run S-Trace on this, which, I mean, it, it you can. Uh, but when S-Trace doesn't show you that I'm calling puts, that doesn't give me a direct fix. I just know that something isn't working. Actually, that's trace wouldn't show puts, it'd show right. But same, same idea. Uh, to actually reason about what's wrong with my payload, 
the, the answer is good old GDB. So we disassembled the challenge, and this is apparently something people uh, were having a little bit of trouble with, is how do I step through this in GDB? The point that I'm overwriting where execution flow goes from the normal challenge behavior to my ROP gadget is going to be out of ret. In this case, main calls challenge, challenge ret. That is where I'm interested in things going on. We run this, okay, I step, I get my pop RDI, I get my pop ret. Uh, okay, we're at the puts at PLT. And then what I'm interested in is what is RDI. Uh, let's examine the address at RDI. Okay, that is the puts at GOT. Oh man, that is just unfortunate. That is bad luck. That is horrifically bad luck. <laughs> this is why this is why you practice your your demos. Uh, so does anyone want to tell me why I'm not seeing it? I didn't plan this. Uh, this is just. Uh, uh, funny. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that, that, uh, the, the statement for Twitch is because this is got at, um, uh, PLT. If I, if I were to use my script and print out, um, eh, where am I doing it? If I were to print out E got puts, it would be, um, this address. Um, and I know it's this address because as I stepped through, I did it pre pretty quickly, but as I stepped through the gadgets, I, this RDI is what was popped in. Uh, and if I were to look at, um, let's do like four instructions at what's there. Uh, th this is in fact the address where there is a pointer to puts inside of libc. So I got the correct location. I'm calling puts puts. What does puts do? It writes a string, right? It writes a string to standard up. What is a C string? Oh. Th th this is first principles. Like I didn't plan this, but I immediately know what happened. One byte. Yes, the very That's first no byte, because remember, um, strings, when we look at addresses, the strings are printed this way. So I, and I swear I didn't plan this. I'm not sure how I'm gonna fix it yet. Uh, th this address is my, pointer that we're trying to put, and it is just a null byte. And so it's immediately saying we're going to print nothing. That is unfortunate. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's think about how we can fix this real quick. Let's grab example three dot C. Um, that is because the address of puts is there. Okay, I'm not even gonna like mess around with the binary. Let's start this. Does anyone have any ideas? Oh yeah, so I don't need to specifically put puts, right? I just need to put something that points to libc. I don't care what it is, just give me something in libc where I know what it is. And so the, the comment from the class was uh, puts uh, printf, is that right? Yeah, puts read. Okay, puts read, I, I don't know, right? That this art isn't resolved right now, let's continue. Um, let's take another look at the got, yeah. And so these are all green, so, and I just use GDB um, to see what they resolve to. Um, puts has that null byte, but either one of printf and read do not have a null byte in them. So let's let's fix that. What do I need to change here? Change the got to printf. All right, I'm a believer. I'm just going to continue all the way through because what I care about. Okay, so now we're getting uh, what I was initially expecting here. I'm getting some garbage bytes out. This is not a pretty text representation of that address. These are the raw bytes 
and I represent the numeric. Now I can still parse this. How do I parse this? Or how do I get this? Uh, I could receive all. I'm going to quickly take a look. It says ready to receive input. Uh, is there a new line there? I don't know. I'm going to cheat and look at the source in the interest of time, but you could imagine that you're looking at this uh, reversing. So since it is puts, there is going to be a new line there, puts appends a new line. So I'm going to do something very similar to how I got the address of main. Question. Doesn't running the binary twice re-randomize the puts address and we may not get it? Uh, the question is, if does rerunning the address change the it re-randomizes so I won't get a null byte. Is that possible? You're correct in the sense that the addresses are re-randomized. You're incorrect that that particular null byte would be re-randomized. Uh, let's see if I can show you why. So the way that things are randomized, ASLR, PIE, what are we randomizing? Uh, Libc. Okay, so that's... The, the, the answer is I'm randomizing libc, so this is an address. In this case, it is libc that I care about. But is every nibble of the address randomized? No, what, what is actually randomized? What is the implementation of ASLR? Only the base address. Only the base address. And the base address is a multiple of a page. A page is 4,000, or no, 4096. Uh, 4096 bytes, uh, which is hex 1,000. And that's why when we look at these base addresses here, they all end in 000 for the least significant nibbles. So if that's where everything starts, then the offset from the base will be consistent. And so the least significant three nibbles of anything will be consistent. You can't say that about the four. But what I can say about this puts is the three least significant nibbles on this challenge, right, for this libc will always be 500. All right. Uh, the highest, higher nibble here, the, I'm going to call it the first five, that could change because what randomizes is the page. And the page starts at the fourth nibble, right? Everything from the fourth nibble onward is, is the page. And then the last three nibbles are the offset into the page. And so those last three nibbles will always be consistent. The randomization impacts uh, the other uh, nibbles involved there in the middle of the address. Good question, though. So uh, we got around this uh, by printing just something else in libc, because I don't actually need puts puts. Uh, somebody said print puts plus one, right? I, I could have done that. I could have taken. No, I couldn't have done that. That wouldn't have worked because you are providing a pointer into uh, into the got table. And so you'd be incrementing the pointer into the got table. And what you would get from that is a byte that doesn't matter followed by a null byte. Um, so so the, your, your better option is to print something else that you know is in libc. All right, so I'm, I need to capture this thing. I'm going to P receive until, same strategy I had before here, except now I'm looking for, I believe, input exclamation point. Uh, and then I'll throw in the new line so that I have that. So now I know I've read everything that is there. Now here I just need to eat however many bytes this is. I got one, two, three, four, five, six bytes here. Some of these, none of these are three digit hex values. All right. I, I know that was something people got tied up. The way to read this is escape X, the next two digits are the encoded. This nine is a literal character nine, which is the byte uh, hex three nine. Not that you need to be able to read this from printout, uh, but that, that that is worth being aware of. There should be, what did I say, six? 
One, two, three, four, five, yes, six bytes. I'm sorry? This? Oh, what about this backslash? So, so when I'm looking at this, and this is because I'm familiar with how Python represents byte trains. The first byte is hex 1a. The second byte is the character 9, which is the byte hex 39. The third byte it has the value hex 8b. The fourth byte, did I do that right? One, oh, the back tick. The back tick, okay, one, two, three, four, five, it's still six, I just, I knew it was six, I just counted wrong uh, on paper. Yeah, so it's back tick, 1A, the character nine, eight B, AA, the character squiggly. All right, so it's gonna be six bytes, yes? Does this end in a new line? The question was, can why can't I just receive line again? No. no, you're actually right, it does. Because we're calling puts. Puts appends a new line to whatever you're pointing to. So I could do that. Uh, in other contexts, um, you don't have that guarantee, right? Um, in my opinion, it's better to receive the raw six bytes. Um, because you'll get these scenarios. Imagine this challenge printed off more garbage. Right afterwards, uh, and then there wasn't a new line. Right, you could have this, and then it says "Hello World" right after. And if I receive line, I'm going to get this garbage. In this specific scenario, you could you could receive line. So I have these six bytes. How do I turn this into a number? Something I can work with. Uh, pack unpack. Okay. Uh, so here I want to unpack. Uh, and I have six bytes, so that's not good. Um, let's L just it with null bytes. I think that uh, that's what I'm after. Uh, and this is going to be, what did we say? libc printf. Okay. So now I have that. And let's let's print it off to make sure that we are correct because it's a good practice. Print F is at libc print F adder. Uh, we are still running this with GDB, which is nice. Let's break at, I can't, can I break it puts? I think I can break it puts. I think that'll get me where I want. Uh, let's go one more. Backtrace, we are definitely there. Uh, we get main, I'm gonna go one more. Oh, that's a shame. All right, so instead, I'm gonna have to step through this thing. Uh, we'll disassemble challenge. We'll break at challenge plus 83. Remember, we could script this if we wanted. There's my puts, puts. Okay, now I am inside of puts, which we finny. Out of puts. Gosh, dang it. Am I getting it? What is it? Complaining. L just P64, P receive. Uh, is it hiding error messages here? Unpack requires a buffer of eight bytes. Oh, gosh dang it. My Python's exploding, not my um, GDB. Okay. So now I see up here, this is what my pwn tools parsing of those bytes was. Uh, my mistake, in case you didn't catch it, uh, I had L just two and then the null byte. L just you set the length that you want. I want this thing to be padded to a length of eight with null bytes. That gives me this six, throws on the, the two null bytes. That way it can be parsed by uh, the unpacker U64. And, and this is a good practice here is to have GDB verify that what you're parsing and thinking about is correct. So this is where I think puts is inside GDB. I could print, um, print 
print print f, and what we see here is the address print f is at. This is the same address. Now this I came to not from anything in GDB, right? I, I came to this uh, number purely from my leak and my exploit. You want to make sure these two things are separate. But I can use GDB to verify that what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about here in memory is correct. Okay. So now that I have this libc leak, how do I use it? What's something I may want to do? Something you guys really want to do. CH mod flag. Uh, so I may want to ch mod the flag, right? But let's let's think about the, the problem that I'm facing here. What happens after I send my payload? What does the challenge do? Uh, it exits. It exits. So by the time I get my leak, by the time I get libc, it's just going to exit. Am I screwed? I'm not. After the fix, after the fix, what's the, what's the fix? You just know that there is one? You think I'm a clever guy? What do we got? Uh, go back to the position where I could do a second read. Uh, when you say go to the position I could do a second read, be more specific. What are you suggesting? Okay, so so more more general. Instead of drilling down and saying exactly where you wanted, you step back and generalize. I'm okay with that. Uh, it was still it was still correct. So somehow I want to be able to get a second payload into this, and so I want to call read. Can I do that? And where do I do that? Uh, after the rop chain. After the rop chain. What goes after the rop chain? Uh, put the address of read after e dot PRD. Okay, so the, the statement was somehow call read here, which I think I can do. I can just, whoop, I don't need four of them. Uh, did I mess that up? I did. Uh, I only need one of these. So I can call read. All right, let's break on read. Let's see if we get there. This first one should be the challenge doing it. The second one is, if we take a look at the backtrace, um, my claim is, this is the rock gadget doing it. I, I actually can't prove it to you here, but that's my claim. Uh, where am I reading into? Does this help me? So the first argument of read is RDI. RDI is, is not looking like a file descriptor. Uh, the second argument of read is the buffer I'm reading into, uh, which is RSI. This is somewhere. It's somewhere in the heap. We haven't talked about that. I wasn't planned, but OK. So I need to fix these. Uh, we know I have a. Oh, we can just call main. And done. Okay, so there was a statement that I could call main. You can do that, right? You can wrap. You can treat functions just like how we're calling puts uh, a gadget, right? It's just a really big gadget that calls this whole function. There's nothing stopping us from going back and calling main again, right? And starting execution. One of the things I would be wary of doing that, I'm not saying that it won't work in this context, uh, is if you start like calling yourself and going into things, you're going to start messing up things on the stack and things will not be what the program intended. This is particularly true if you start doing pivoting stuff, right? Um, or you clobber RBP for, existent, for uh, example. Because remember, a local variable can be referenced by RSP, but it could also be referenced by RBP. And so if the challenge is doing that in main or in challenge or you know somewhere in its regular execution, if you are messing up things in memory, you'll have pretty good odds of a seg fault. So something, a seg fault or a sig bus, right? You, you messed up something on the stack or uh, you're accessing memory in a way that was unintended. You can do that. So I'm not saying that you can't, uh, but it isn't where I would try and drive people to. 
Uh, we have the gadgets right now to set RDI, all right? Then I hit R bra zero, right? That's gonna set RDI to zero. The other thing that I'm interested in here is RSI. Uh, if you recall from the source, uh, there is a magic RSI gadget in this binary, but you can see how you could use something else. And when do I wanna set RSI to? That is something I did not think of. So where do I want to write to in memory here? Well, I want to write to something on the stack, right? Okay. But I can't know where the stack is right now because the only things that I have are main and printf. Can I get a stack leak? Maybe. What do I got here? Move RSP, RVP, push RP, pop RDI, brat. I can get it into RVP. What I'm looking for. Uh, add RSP8. I'm looking for is a way to get RSP into RDI here. Because I need a stack leak to get that leak. Because then I could put whatever's on the stack. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see, is Twitch gonna be useful? Mm -hmm. Lack of RSI gadget, I gave myself an RSI gadget. So let's just go to start. All right, whatever. Uh, so I wanted to just try and call read again, but maybe, maybe you guys are right here. And the answer is to go back to main or start let's see what happens uh print f i got this read so i can't do this read i want e symbols main let's see what happens that would be awesome does this get me back to main there's my first main, it gets me to the second main, I continue, I'm at the read. All right, I'll buy it, okay? That was the way to go here. Uh, okay, so I've got my, my second read. Well, what I'm interested in now is what does this payload have to look like to do um, my, my next ROM? So what I'm interested in RSI, and then Finney, I don't care. Uh -uh. Okay, now we got there. Um, info frame, Finney, take my bytes. Oh, no, the bytes go up here now. Okay, uh, info frame. And then what was my RSI from earlier? Maybe dollar sign one. Uh, print dollar sign one. We subtract the two. Hopefully it's still, no, oh, it is a different number. It's a good thing we, we masked. It's 272 for whatever reason instead of uh, 264. Uh, and so I could then repeat this, uh, getting that payload, uh, and rock libc. Do people want me to rock libc or do people want me to throw together something with a stack pivot?
Okay, that one's pretty universal. This would have been this would have been cool, all right, guys. We would have e elfed lib C. We would have driven through there, all right. This was a two stage drop chain. This was a sweet demo, all right. All right, so let's make this some type of contrived stack pivot for for you all. Uh, that's not too hard. Uh, what we'll do here is we will make this buffer only be 24 bytes, and I will set a global variable up here, which we will call global buff, and it will be a big boy of 256 bytes. This challenge is going to uh, print or puts, uh, give me global. It will then read from standard in into that global buff. Uh, 256 bytes. It then does the exact same thing, except now I'm only going to read in, I don't know, 48, 32, so some small number. Is 32 reasonable? I don't know. 48 should be uh, should be enough to overflow this buffer, get me to the same current address, but I don't get a bunch of gadgets, right? So, so we see that I'm under some kind of uh, constraint here. Now, what I'm giving myself in this challenge that I don't believe you have in the, or at least like as obvious um, as you do in this, is I'm giving myself this like scratch area, this global buff, right? That I can write things into. And let's, in the interest of time, Leak out global buff. All right, that seems like a, a reasonable, reasonable scenario. We hate it. We like it. I don't know. There's phases. Let's build this thing. What did I just write? Example three. So we can make. I think I called this thing Elf Leak. I did that right, give me global, ready to receive input. Okay, we have to adjust this thing a little bit. My payload should now be 24 plus eight should be what, 32? Yeah, it's a guess, right? The compiler could have chose something else. Uh, then I need to change what I'm doing here. Okay, so instead, I need to somehow do a pivot. What I'll do is we will p receive until uh, global, that's what this thing says, right? Yes, receive until global new line. I will send our chain, so I'm writing my ROP chain uh, to this global variable. And what I want to do is somehow pivot up to this global variable. What is a stack pivot in the simplest of terms? Okay, popping RSP. The, all we are doing, all we have to do for it to be a stack pivot is set RSP to point somewhere that isn't where it is right now. Why do I care about that? Because if I pop RSP in RET, what does RET do? It pops RET. Does RET care where RSP points? The answer is no. Uh, what we are doing here, this is where we find out if technology works. Oh, and then you don't get to see it. This is where all of it goes, goes awry. Uh, uh, full screen, sure. Does that make it? Oh no, something really bad happened. <laughs> Okay, so that wasn't what I wanted. Uh... Oh no. 
That isn't what I wanted either. This is all, all going downhill. Okay. Well, worry about drawing later then. In theory, I was going to draw a pretty picture. Uh, what's on there? You see what I want you to see? Oh, this Twitch delay sucks. Okay, we're going to go with that. Uh, we have some region of memory where the BSS is. This is where my global buff is, which has my ROP gadgets. I, I then have somewhere else a region that is the stack, and there are gadgets here, gadgets here, and RSP is pointing to one of these. Uh, when we want to stack pivot, as somebody said, um, the ideal thing would be pop RSP, and then this becomes the address. We'll use C, C syntax, the address of global buff. And what that should do is if I have a pop RSP, uh, then the RSP becomes the global buff, which points to up there, which is where the rest of my gadgets are. Yeah? All right. So realistically, do you get pop RSP? There's, there's heads making the noise left and right. They're saying no. Uh, what do we have instead of pop RSP? We have leave. What is leave? So almost every function ends with leave ret. This is the function epilogue. What do these things do? I hear move RSP RBP. Pop RBP. Pop RAP. So leave and ret are both uh, instructions that are like performance optimizations because they happen all the time at the end of every function. But if we were to think about the actual actions that occur, it's these three things. We're going to set RSP to be whatever RBP was. That's eliminating the current uh, stack frame. We're then going to pop RBP. So we're popping that saved RBP. And then we pop rip. That's where we are popping in that saved return address. So if we don't get pop RSP, we can find a leave ret. But what is one thing to be aware of if I'm going to use leave ret? I need to set RBP, right? I'm not saying I have to set it to be something valid, but I have to set it. And so I have to know that in my payload. So if I, I'm going to wrap gadget here. Uh, sure. Leave rat. There is a way to use pwn tools to get a leave rat. In fact, they have a whole fancy pivot function that I don't understand either. Uh, I'm going to use e address plus whatever I got there because I'm a savage. Okay. So I have my padding. I have my lead ret. What do I want to include after that? Uh, as we said over here, over here, uh, that it is uh, move RSP RBP. Do I care about that step? Not really. Uh, I need to set something to be RBP and I need something to be RIP. So uh, payload plus equals, I don't know. Uh, what do you want, beef? Beef is good. Go P64 beef. This is what's going to be an RBP. P64, this is where I need my uh, new, Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, move RBP RSP, hop RBP. I'm thinking about this wrong. What do I, do I care about the RBP? Yeah, I need to set RBP because what I care about here is not the pop. 
right? What I care about is this right here. This is what gives me control of RSP. So I need to set RBP first, as you pointed out. So that means I don't want RBP to be beef. I want RBP to be, let's see if this exists. Um, is this going to work? Is it going to keep that symbol for me? What did I call that thing? Global. I don't know if this exists or not. We'll find out together. Global buff, global buff. That's going to set RBP. Then we have a gadget again where we pop rip. Okay, that's my leave ret. That's what's going to be popped into RBP. Then we're going to pop rip, which I'm going to give it another leave ret. Does that make sense? I find a gadget to just pop RBP? I don't know if this guy's going to have one. Okay, I do. That makes life way easier. So let's do payload plus equals my base address plus this, uh, which is a pop RBP. Then we do the address of my global buff, and then I call leave rat. Uh, that hopefully works. Uh, we'll find out. I don't know if the symbol is going to be right or not. I don't know if that resolves. Uh, do I care about this? Not really. Receive until input. Uh, I don't care about this. Uh, yeah, let's just run it and see what blows up. Five minutes. I think we can get there. Right. Challenge plus 147. We'll continue. I'm not sending enough stuff. What am I sending? Uh, global, PSend, our chain. Oh, okay. So what happened here is I didn't, there's two reads, but these are PSend, PSend. And so those are kind of rapid firing here. Uh, one way I could deal with this is p.clean. Uh, the other way that I could deal with this is, I actually, actually, no, I was just blocked there. So. Uh, I want to wait until it says it's ready for input before sending the, the extra input. Break, we fire. Do I get there? I do not. Why? I'm still blocked on read. Okay. Let's run this thing. Give me global. Does this make sense? P, receive until... Global, yes, that makes sense. Uh, P receive until input, that makes sense. Uh, anyone see it? Fire off there, that's fine. Peace and our chain. No? This is like a goofy IO thing that I'm hung up on right now. I'm not sure what it is. I'm sorry? Uh, it, that shouldn't be an issue because this should flush it. Um, if we look at the 
backtrace. I'm inside read. We can go to the first frame. Uh, give me context. And then we could disassemble where we're at. I am still at the first uh, read. So that's true. So my clean, my clean doesn't get me there. Okay, so I'm still hung on the first read. I'll do what you are suggesting to just get this out of the way. That shouldn't be necessary though. Uh, L just 256, we'll pad it with null bytes. Does that get me? Okay, that's my first read. I'm not sure what I'm hung on. Gosh dang it. Uh, you want log level debug? I don't like that. All right. Uh, it's not a new line thing because we're using read. You want log level? See, that was see uh, okay let you continue give me global Where is my send? Send our chain receive tool global send payload our chain receive until global. I get this and then I don't send that. Is this like an encoding thing because I didn't make it a byte string? That would be super. You are reading two strings after they call main, right? Uh, so the, let's see. Yeah, we're there. I'm receiving until I get the byte string global, which is what we see right here. That should be good. This should send this. I'm not sure why it is not sending. because it is in fact receiving that. Mm. So the problem is in the IO side, I believe. And the reason I say that is because we don't see the send in this debug output, right? So we aren't getting there. And so we're hanging right here. I just don't know why. Technically, I don't have to block on that. Right, we received it. I've sent my nonsense here. I've sent 256 bytes. This is reading global buff 256. We're sending we're, we're sending enough bytes. I don't know why I'm IO blocked. That's a shame. 
Uh, I'm over time, but the stack pivot is setting RBP, calling leave. You're taking advantage of this part right here where you're setting RSP. Then when you uh, pop rip, you are executing the other rock chain that you've loaded into memory. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, now, now, like, now you're just all over the place there, Twitch. Uh, I will debug this later. I'll try and throw a stack pivot like code sample on the Discord uh, that you can play around with. Is that that fair? Cool. Uh, with that, I, I ran out of time. That's my bad. Uh, hopefully there was something useful there. Okay. I have audio. I can see chat. Everything has just like exploded. All right. We're going to try this again. Fortunately, uh, sorry about that. Um, I just need to completely reinstall OBS. So, um, I was deciphering why things were broken. Bit of background noise on the mic. I'd believe that. Um, well, it's not echoing. It's just picking up ambient noise here. So that's, that's the best I can get you. Hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, so I was trying to figure out um, what was wrong with my code. And the answer was the challenge wasn't printing out located at, but I had this located at in my phone tool script. And so we brought this back. So now this prints out main. What a mess. Okay. Uh, and I was setting um, I was trying to do a stack pivot from here, get rid of this, so we can see all of the code of what was going on here. My challenge binary says main is located at, give me global. We give it something, it says ready to receive input, except uh, receive is misspelled, whatever. We give it another payload. Uh, the challenge binary is not particularly interesting, uh, right? We're going to um, print out that main. We're going to read into the global buff. This, since it is a global buffer, uh, should be in the BSS section. Uh, it's going to print off the global buffer. So I should just grab um, global buff from there if we're, if we're being real, um, since we have that. Uh, I get main, I had main already, okay. Oh, this binary, this set poor, poor binary. Okay. Make elf leak. We get main, we get the global. Why are you? Yes. And start with something that we can reason about. Okay, now out, main, give me global. Can I just remove that? Oh, this didn't actually write. Okay. Uh, remove a dot out. Yes. Uh, make home fleek. We have a normal binary. Give me global. Global buff for you receive input. Okay. So now that matches the, the behavior of the binary matches the source code over here on the right. So we're going to read once into global buff. Uh, we're going to read a second time uh, into onto a local variable. Uh, there is a slight buffer overflow here, but it's not enough to really do a full run. 
And then we have some free gadgets down here to make life make life easy. All right. Our payload, then our exploit. Let's just go through it right here. Make sure that the left-hand side matches the right-hand side. So we're going to start the process. Uh, we're going to receive until located at with a space. I'm going to grab this hex value, which is going to be this right here. Uh, once I have the address of main, we can set the base address of this elf. That makes sense. Uh, then I'm going to use the elf uh, in a ROP payload. These things exist. This will be, be written uh, into this first read. So uh, we are setting up our ROP payload. We're going to wait until we receive global here. Uh, then we're going to send that ROP chain. So this ROP chain should get written up in, up in the BSS. All right, so here is my BSS payload. Uh, it then will print off global buff. So I am not using that, but that's fine. It then says ready to receive input. I don't care about that I'm going to receive until input exclamation point and then I send uh, my payload. So this is a little bit backwards because we're sending our second stage before our first now where what we did in class it or where the demo that we started off with in class made sense we sent payload one then we called read to take in payload two. But here it's the inverse. We're sending payload two and then trying to get payload one to redirect uh, to payload two. All right, so now let's run this thing and we will, a point that we're interested in is where we can take control. So we disassemble challenge. Uh, we'll break at challenge plus 147. If you can type, we continue onwards. All right, so this should be pop RBP, uh, which is what we see right here, because this is my stage one. Let's see if we can make that bigger. All right, we pop RBP, we print RBP. And why do I get one here? That's what's confusing. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Thank you, thank you, Siri. Um, so some, for some reason, that is resolving to one. We're popping one, which is not good. And then we end up over here in no man's land. Okay. Well, these addresses could be wrong because I have rebuilt my binary. So let's run ROP gadget again. Uh, that would that would make sense. Uh, ROP gadget binary a dot out. We can grep then for RBP again. If we can type. Uh, we have a pop RBP, so that gadget was good. Uh, what about the leave rat? Uh, let's make sure. Leave 11EB. One, one so I, in theory, have a leave rat at that location as well. So what I don't understand is why I'm getting a one there. Let's get rid of this debug stuff that wasn't helpful. And throw in the interactive session. 
Okay, GDB here on. What is E symbols global buff? That is real. And if I P64 it, I get something. And if I hex it, I also get something same. So the question is why does E symbols global buff at this point when I send payload have a one in it? Mm, grip RDP one one four three. But we can see that right now I have both the debugger down here at the bottom, uh, paused on the program, and then I have this interactive Python session to try and sanity check um, what is going on here. And so what I'm interested in inside it read. Oh, I'm inside of read because I haven't um, I'm still in the interactive session. I'm here, so I haven't sent this payload yet. So then what I really want to know is ahead of time, if we quit out of all of this, I want to get to the first read and see where read is actually putting stuff. Uh, so if we break on read, we can continue. What I'm interested in here is RSI. This is the location that should be global buff, because if I were to disassemble challenge here. I am at uh, B1A7. B1A7. So I'm at this first call to read uh, and it is going to read into global buff. So that makes sense. If we finny from there, uh, this should be my global buff. And if we were to examine, because now we've completed the read because I finished uh, from that read call, I should be able to examine the address at this location. And that is the first ROP gadget, which if I were to examine two instructions at my first ROP gadget, there's my pop RDI rep. So that makes sense. That is this first payload right here getting sent in. That's my pop RDI. And then if I were to uh, examine, what do I got? We'll say six, six addresses here. This is my pop RDI gadget just in the BSS. This right here is my um, print F in the GOT. Uh, which makes sense that aligns with what I have right here. My next gadget is puts it PLT that aligns with what I'm doing here. And then I am calling. That's why everything is funky. I'm calling main again and I don't need, well, no, that main doesn't hurt anything for our pur purposes for the pivot, but my stage two is then going to call main again because apparently that's what we're doing. Um, all right, so now I want to, if we info break, I still have a breakpoint at read. So let's continue. And so now I am in the read, which I'll want to finny. And what I'm interested in here is that and that. Are they the same thing? The answer is yes. Okay, so then let's finish from the read. So my elf is correct. 
Now here, my exploit is just kind of blocked on this interactive session. And nah, you didn't miss all the fun. I'm still broken. I'm still broken and I haven't figured out why, but we're gonna reason our way through this. Uh, so I am currently blocked right here. The challenge is blocked on read. So I can, in my interactive session, say p send payload. All right, that went in. Now I should be able to examine, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, let's do like 40 giant hex at RSI. Here's my A's, that makes sense. Then this should be my first gadget. We examine the address right there. Uh, if that you no, know, if that's my gadget, then I want to examine uh, like three instructions there. There's my pop RBP ret, so that is there, and then I get a one. Oh, I think I know why we're cursed. This is eight, sixteen, thirty-two, forty, forty-eight bytes. I actually need to read in more bytes onto the stack. So even though I'm sending 40, uh, 48, 56, 64, I'm sending 64 bytes here in um, my exploit script. If we were to, what a cursed demo. Uh, if we were to look at what was going on in here, it's really only reading 48. And so this read wasn't large enough for the payload that I needed. Actually, no, let's not do that. Let's get rid of our interactive session. We have to be an optimist here. Uh, we'll disassemble challenge. We'll break at challenge plus 147, which is where our stage one should hit. Okay, we're going to pop RVP. We print RVP. Now RVP is global buff. Yeah, it, it, exactly. That's exactly what I get for trying to like hot change this um, the, this code to make it all work. Uh, but now RBP is the global buff. So we ret, then we leave. And at the moment of leave, if we were to print RSP, it is now global buff plus eight. And that's kind of weird, right? Why is it global buff plus eight? Well, if you, I don't have the scratch pad anymore, but the leave instruction does a couple things. It does move RSP, RBP, and then it does pop RBP. And so we were taking advantage of this first action, right? We were setting RBP and then letting move RSP, RBP set, um, RSP to be somewhere I'm interested in. What I didn't account for is the pop RBP. And so instead of jumping where I wanted to, which was global buff, I'm at global buff plus eight. So that kind of sucks. Can we fix that? Well, we could fix that uh, a couple different ways. I could up here when I'm reading into the BSS here, I could add some dummy bytes, right? I could add eight A's here, and that is what would get uh, popped. The other thing I could do is I could set this, I could offset the address that I am using by eight. As we said, we are at it plus eight, which means I need to go minus eight. Let's see if that gets us where we want. All 
right. We pop our BP. We rat. We leave. And now what we see is RSP is global buff. And so RSP no longer points to the stack. RSP used to be down in this region. But by doing, eh, where's my gadget here? Uh, a pop RBP leave rat, I have set RSP to now be that buffer that is in the BSS. Uh, and if I were to continue to step through my gadgets here, this pop RDI is going to match my stage two that I had sent earlier, which is going to be this right here. So we pop RDI, we ret, and then if we were to look at RDI, uh, let's print it as an address. I don't know what I'm doing over here. I'm, uh, I'm putting libc from here. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm putting printf. I'm just doing that in my stage two now uh, that I pivoted to. And so then we step again. I'm inside puts. If we finny from puts, something, something bad happens. Uh, all right, I believe I know what this is. I believe this is a stack alignment thing. So there are some things inside of libc that require um, the stack to be aligned by 16 bytes. And I believe we hit one of those traps uh, right now. So if I'm right, we can, our problem is right here. I still don't have Lucy. Uh, right here, uh, RSP is not uh, 16 bytes aligned. So the kind of workaround for that is we can shift the stack by eight by inserting a gadget that is just rat. So if I wrap gadget on my binary and we just grep for, well, everything's going to be rat, but this is what I really need. Uh, 101A is my offset. Um, we can R raw. I know you can search for a gadget, but I don't know the syntax offhand. So I'm going to say uh, e address plus rx101a. That should get me where's my break? Step into this. My leave ret. Pop RDI, ret. We ret one more time. I'm just out of curiosity. So the prior to the ret, RSP did end in an eight. So it was not 16 byte aligned. But when I ret a second time, now when I get into puts, RSP ends in a zero. So it is 16 byte aligned. If this doesn't, if this finny doesn't explode, um, then it was a stack alignment issue. Uh, Twitch says that a rock gadget that is just ret is equivalent to a knob, and that, that is correct. And we do see that we didn't explode where we were. We're now exploding somewhere else. So it likely was a stack alignment issue. But now we are exploding on push R12.
Okay, so somehow in that mess, we set RSP, <laughs> uh, we set RSP itself uh, to be, who puts it got. And this is an example of where um, clobbering stuff leads to like very strange behavior. So the, the original problem was that my stack wasn't aligned by 16 bytes. My current problem uh, is somehow RSP is getting messed up. Let's see. We can find her there. There's my leave, there's my ret, my pop ret. What is RSP now? RSP is global buff plus 24. And then what is RBP? RBP is zero. So when I step into puts at PLT, my RSP is somewhat reasonable, right? Like it is a region of memory that is read write. And so it conceivably uh, could, uh, could be functional as a stack, but somewhere in this thing, It's going to change RSP, and that is going to just ruin our day. So this is where we exploded before, which we can step over. And so the question is, my RSP is still sane here, right? We're still happy in the BSS. If I keep on marching, Where, where or when does RSP get messed up? Or there. Back in my source code. This was just a ret uh, to make a 16 byte stack align. This is no longer a problem. Like I should be able to make it through puts. Let's see, let's disassemble puts. Uh, how many rats are there? Is there just one rat? That would be amazing. Okay. There's one rat. That's a puts plus 243. So I don't think we get here. We don't. We're in. So inside of puts, RSP is reasonable. I went uh, to frame two. Frame three, I am in puts. Okay, inside puts, this is reasonable. The problem is that we are but what's my puts takes one argument, which is RDI. Uh, if we examine the string of RDI. Why don't we set RDI? Uh, RSP 2048, frame 4, 2088, right? So then we go into puts. Did I not set RDI correctly when I called puts? Pop RD, RDI to be egot printf. Then we call 
put, I don't understand where, backtrace, frame three, context, disassemble. So we are failing whatever this check is, which is leading into a big old mess. And so what I think is happening is by pivoting up into the BSS here and then using that as, so I was, uh, Twitch says they're confused. So I set the context to be puts, right? I'm in my broken state right now. So my actual seg fault is down here in IO do right, new do, oh no, it's in frame zero. This is my actual seg fault. My seg fault is occurring on push R12. Now this is several calls in from puts, right? I'm not saying that I'm gonna be able to fix this, but I wanna at least understand what's going on and why it's happening. Um, So I'm blowing up on a push instruction, which is a strange instruction in like a normal context to seg fall on. But if I were to look at this push R12, what is push needs to do two things. It needs to decrement RSP and then place the value there. What is RSP? RSP is this thing here and look what happened to the memory region. So when we, the reason that this is, I can fix this. We can fix this. This is an insane problem, right? Uh, and and it, it shouldn't come up in the challenges, but that's part of the fun of like poking at this and reasoning about what's going on. So as we called puts after our pivot, when we pivoted, we made up RSP, right? We just said RSP is going to be whatever my global buff is that's chilling up in the BSS. But when you use a stack and you start pushing values, RSP goes down. And so what happened here, if we look, RSP is 69A2000. And we are at the earliest part of this read-write section of memory. And so what is at uh, 69A, what would that be? 69A1FF8. That's going to be this region of memory right here, which is not writable. And so we are, we grew our stack because the stack grows in the negative direction. We grew our stack backwards from where we were here into a region of memory that we can't write to. Now, we didn't know that when we made this like puts gadget, right? But that, that's what happened. And so what we need to do in order to make this all happy, which now this is just like a fun exercise to see if we can do it is I don't want to pivot to global buff minus eight. I want to go later into this global variable. And so I really want up here in my stage two that I'm doing earlier, I want to send some, some padding bytes. Doesn't really matter what they are. I'm going to send A times 64. I don't know that this is enough. It's completely arbitrary what I'm, what I'm choosing here. And then my place I'm going to pivot to, for simplicity's sake, we're going to say it's going to be where we were, except I want to go 64 bytes ahead. And what this will do is it moves the like starting location of our pivoted stack pointer that's hanging out in the BSS. It should give us eight more values that could be pushed on. That was a cool, cool uh, problem to kind of run into. Uh, so now let's 
break at our challenge. All right, here's my stage one. We pop our VP, we ret, we leave. So now we've done our pivot. Um, this is my ret for stack alignment, I think. Uh, we, oh no, 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 that was just a normal ret. We pop our DI. This is my ret for stack alignment because I was about to go into puts and we see that RSP is ending in an eight. And so this extra ret that's just kind of randomly there uh, gets us 16 by the line. Now, do I finish through puts? I would think so. No, I'm still saying fault. Am I, and I'm seg faulting on a call. My RSP is now this. So there's a whole lot going on there. We did the same thing, right? We still haven't moved far enough ahead. But as it turns out, when you start calling you know, these non-trivial gadgets, like our gadget of in our case, um, we're calling uh, puts it PLT. This puts it PLT is like a big gadget. We're like, oh, but it just calls puts, right? Sure, it just calls puts. But as we can see here from this increasingly uh, deeper call stack, puts is actually doing quite a bit of stuff. It's pushing a bunch of stuff to the stack because it assumes the stack is something sane. Uh, and Every time that you call, you're pushing a, a saved rip plus probably a saved RVP. So let's let's see if this is solvable in the extreme. How 256 bytes is how much that read is. So 64 wasn't enough. Let's pad this thing by, what do, you, what do we want? Uh, give me a multiple of eight, it's like 200. Uh, so 128 would be in the middle, but clearly our problem is not, clearly our problem is the stack growing, so going in the negative direction. So I wanna bias um, Deep. I want to go deep into this this bad boy. Um, what is hex of two hundred? I should know this. Okay, two hundred seems reasonable. Uh, it was important there that I pick something that was a multiple of eight. Now that may have messed up my stack alignment because I don't know if 200 is a multiple of 16. I don't think it is. So we'll probably, let's just fire this off and see if we blow up due to stack alignment. Uh, all right, we didn't blow up due to stack alignment, but I don't think, let's get rid of this recursive call. because I don't trust that right there. Okay, we break at, uh, come on, break, break, challenge. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, disassemble, challenge, break at, challenge plus 147. We'll get there. All right, let's step through this whole thing. There's my stage one, there's my pop RBP, there's my ret, there's my leave, there's my ret. I'm now in my, I've now done the pivot and that's because RSP is now pointing to something in the elf, uh, probably in the BSS. So now we step through our stage two, we pop our DI, uh, we have a bonus ret. We are going to trigger puts at PLT. I want a finny from puts. 
cannot break at zero, which is probably because there's no gadget there. There's nothing. We, we don't know where we're finishing to. Right. Rat, rat, rat. All right. We are inside the puts. We finish by seg fault. But did I put something? I think I did. What's my backtrace on this? I'm in no man's land. Uh, why am I in no man's land? Uh, when I jump there, that's assuming that there's a call. Puts might be. Uh, you're trying to do math, Twitch. Don't, don't do math on me. All right. I believe in the power of GDB. Move rat, pop, pop, rat. Or inside puts. You know what? Let's just step through puts. Just for the meme. See if I get trapped in puts again. All right, puts is happy. I just want to get to the rat. I'm assuming that we're getting there. Okay. Okay, we are getting where I was expecting. Okay, so the rock chain is is successfully calling puts. Uh, we aren't seeing anything being printed there, which is its own kind of WTF. Because in theory, that should be what printf is. Is printf like... Mm. Oh, I'm consuming it. Here is that. Okay, I'm already consuming it. Yes. All right. So, so my stage two is that's why I'm not seeing it in here. My this is where reading my own exploit would be would be useful. Um, right here, I'm sending the first payload right, which causes the second payload. The second payload is printing is putting on print F, and then I'm receiving the six bytes of print F down here which I then unpack into the libc printf and I print the address, which is what we see right here from the exploit, which does match what is actually occurring um, in the binary. So I did it. I did it and I didn't know I did it, but that was, um, can I explain why there's two pop RDI in a row? Yeah, that's pretty easy. I put two pop RDIs in a row. Like I just put that there. So there was something there. Um, I probably didn't need to, but it's something where looking at GDB, this is clearly not a normal thing, right? Uh, this is my gadget. So that, 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 that's why you like build a uh, custom custom demo, you know, custom example binaries where you're like, okay, this is a nice example of one thing. Yeah, uh, just something nice for me to spot. Yeah. Um, that way, when I got to the end of puts here, I know I'm going to my gadgets. But the ha happy little accidents, right? I don't know uh, how useful it was for. The pivot bought uh, just, uh, what am I breaking at? Challenge.
this simple challenge, break at challenge plus 147. So the actual pivot occurs in my payload one, which is what I have going down right here. And this is three gadgets. I have some padding so that I get to saved RIP. Uh, my pivot is, it doesn't have to be these, but this works for this challenge. Uh, pop RBP. And then I have the address of eight minus or eight bytes behind where I'm trying to go, followed by a leave gadget. And if we step through that, initially we see that RSP is in a same place. The stack pointer points to somewhere that's on the stack. We step through these gadgets, we pop RBP. And so right now, RBP now holds the um, place that I'm trying to pivot to. Leave is the mission critical gadget here. Uh, fortunately, leave ret is pretty much in every user land binary. So leave ret is something that you can absolutely find. Uh, to recap, leave does these two things in this order. Leave will uh, move RSP RBP. This is the thing that I care about. because so we set RSP and I want to take advantage of this part of what leave does. However, I still have to deal with the pop RBP, the fact that that other part occurs. And the way that we deal with that other part is by making sure the value that we are setting RBP to here is eight behind what I'm actually interested in because it's going to pop off the first thing that is loaded into RSP. Which means when I step through this, so we hit the leave, now we look at RSP. All of a sudden, RSP is this global buffer for me, and I ended up having to set it to global buffer plus 200. Um, that was solving its own problem, but it was you know, at least an interesting problem. Uh, and so now we see RSP points to a read-write region of memory inside of the ELF. That is really all a stack pivot is. It's just getting RSP to point somewhere that you are interested in, um, where you hopefully have other gadgets, right? Getting RSP to point somewhere where there are gadgets that either you control or you are extremely interested in running. The problem with doing a stack pivot, as we kind of saw as I was stumbling my way through this, since this wasn't um, set up specifically to be a, a stack pivot, the problem is maybe your pivot doesn't align, right? And this this isn't something, this can happen even if you're doing a, a normal ROP. If you're calling into libc, there are libc functions that can require the stack to be aligned by 16 bytes. You can solve that by inserting just a ret as a gadget. It's an equivalent to a NOP, uh, and that will offset the stack by eight bytes. But if you're pivoting specifically, you can get into these weird scenarios where since RSP is already pointing to, so is now, or RSP is now pointing to a region of memory that was not intended to be um, used as the stack, you as the stack grows and shrinks, because it's just going to keep functioning like the stack pointer is going to keep functioning like a stack pointer. When somebody pushes, it's going to decrement. When, some, when uh, something pops, it's going to increment you can get into weird edge cases, uh, which we happen to, to run into um, while going through this. So it wasn't the cleanest thing, but uh, hopefully at least in the recap, um, we we got there in a, or we ran through it in a clean manner. Does anyone have any questions about the stack pivot? Because since that was what everyone was looking at. Uh, Twitch says that they did learn something 
um, interesting about stack pivoting today. Uh, yeah, you know, and a lot of this, that, that's why I kind of stress first principles like in general is if you understand what a stack pivot is, which is just setting RSP, then you can reason about why something exploded versus if you're like, hey, there's this magic pivot function uh, or um, it crashed and I don't understand why, I was able to, if I didn't have the ability to use GDB to, to like fix this, or to, to look at it, it would be very hard for me to reason about, well, what the heck is going on here, right? Like I would just assume that like the binary is broken, there, there's something horrific going on. But if we think from first principles, okay, well, I'm, I'm getting a seg fault, I'm in GDB, the instruction that I'm seg faulting on is a push, how is that possible? Well, the only thing we know what push does, push um, decrements RSP and then tries to write to it. So then we want to look up here. We see RSP is whatever this is. And then we VM map RSP. And we see that we've reached the edge of this read write, um, read writable page of memory. And so from first principles, we were able to reason why are things exploding? Um, that, that's why I really stress trying to think about things in, at their like lowest level or their most basic implementation. Because without that, I wouldn't have been able to carry on from this. I'd just be like, oh, this binary is cursed. I have no idea what's going on inside of new do right. So uh, another, another happy accident. I appreciate everyone hanging out. I got no questions from Twitch. Uh, I'm going to... Just take at least the second half of this evening stream, smack it on to the end of the YouTube video. Uh, it will not necessarily be in a direct continuance, but that's, that's what's gonna happen. Uh, with that, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Uh, so uh, good luck then. Goodbye and good luck.